Hi, uh, welcome to my channel. I'm Jersey Sketch. I am primarily an artist, but I am also a polycraftual person from the northeast of England. Now, I'm probably still gonna be quite awkward at the beginning of this video, like the previous video. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'll settle down once I've been filming for a little while. Um, but yeah, this is my second video. <laughs> Who would have thought I'd actually come back and make a second video? Not me. But uh, I thought, to start us off, we would actually have a look at a finish that I have. I had this finish for a little while now, um, but I may as well show it before I give it to my sister. Uh, I am going to cover up the name of her and her husband and the date they were married, for, you know, privacy reasons. But I made this for my sister's wedding. I've, I've, I very much, very much enjoy this project. Like, it's so pretty. It's a shame I know my sister likely won't display it anywhere, or if she does, it won't be anywhere I can see it. <laughs> She's um not the biggest fan of anything that I do, but oh well, she has to deal with it. At least she's getting the gift. <laughs> uh, me and my sister have a weird relationship. But yeah, so that's... That's a finish that I have, and I've had for it again for a little while, but I still need to give it to her. And I thought, while I have it, I may as well show it, you know? But uh, now for the actual crafting part of the video, the whip, the whip updates, um, we'll start with my full coverage, which is Memento Ophelia by Erin Fowler, and it was charted by Unconventional X-Stitch. The reason I paused on the name is because I refer to it by a nickname, which is Dead Girl because I don't want to have to type out the name all the time. So me and my friends just refer to her, to this entire project as Dead Girl, because that's what it is. But uh, previously, uh, I was at, what percentage was I at? Sorry, I just need to look at my numbers. 30.58%. Uh, there will have been an image up on already of where, uh, visibly of where that was. But here is where I'm at now, which is 34.37%, so just under 4%. But uh, what I've done is I've gone along the top to here, but I said it's like mirrored, so it's difficult for me. And then I've like filled in this space and I've worked my way down to here. So my plan is to continue to this bit and then move the frame down. I know I could have gone further across, but I like to work in the middle area of the uh, of the Q-snap. But that's, we, we have a boob. We finally have an actual full boob. Because I'm an adult, and I like boobs. Um, but yeah, so that's that project, and uh, let's talk about the next one. So the next project is my dinosaur sampler, which is the A to Z dinosaur chart or sampler. Is it sampler or chart in the name? Chart. The A to Z dinosaur chart by Purple Pansy. Uh, the pattern was actually a gift by my friend Dace, who as mentioned in the previous video, is a friend who is also a floss tuber and a streamer. Because I'm also a streamer. I'll, everything will be linked. Um, yeah, so this is a pattern was actually a gift from him. And I am doing one dinosaur a month. Now, previously I was at 59.09%. And now I'm at 62.03%. So here it is uh, in full. And the dinosaur that I did is this R dinosaur that I can't pronounce. I really can't wait to have this like completely finished because dinosaurs. And yes, I'm using cardboard. Um, <laughs> uh, I love dinosaurs so much and I can't wait to have that frame so I can just like somewhere in my room, it'll be up or maybe in the living room, who knows? Uh, but I love dinosaurs, and I am enjoying that piece, and it should be finished by the beginning of next year. So, yay. <laughs> so the next cross-stitch whip is the Stitchography by the Fat, Fat Quarter Shop. Fat Quarter Shop, yes. Um, now this one doesn't work in Pattern Keeper, so I don't have a percentage, but I'm doing this as a sal with uh, a friend of mine, and we are doing a quarter of the pattern each quarter. But we only work on it on Sundays in my Discord server, which will be linked below. It's a quiet little community, you know? But this is where we're at so far. 
Now, I am actually filming this on a Sunday, uh, so we will work on this today. We're probably going to do... So there's four elements left in this big space. So we're going to do two today and then two next week. Or is there six left? Either way, we worked out to where for the remaining Sundays of the month, we have two elements per Sunday to stitch. And then we'll be halfway and ready to start the next quarter. I am enjoying this piece. It's it's cute. It's simple. And it's it is using up um some fourteen uh some fourteen count that I had laying around because I don't usually work on fourteen count. But since the pattern itself has fourteen count written in it, I figured it would be the perfect way to use up the fabric. <laughs> but that yeah, that's that one. So now we're moving on to black work, and we will start the black work section off with uh, the Urban Stitcher's uh, current sale, which is Moonlit Market. I almost said Midnight Market again. Moonlit Market. And each week we get uh, a bottle released. And, sorry, uh, so far I am up to date. Well, technically I'm a week behind, but I do. So the, the square, the, the bottles get released on Thursday night, Friday morning-ish and I stitch them on the Monday, so I'll be stitching it tomorrow. But this is what we have so far. Again, because black work doesn't work in Pattern Keeper. I don't have any percentages. But we did the B. I think, did we do the, the candle? I think we did the B, and then we did bottles of size. So that's that project. <laughs> it's it's a fun project, I like it. Like, it's, it's coming out well. Um, but it's almost finished. <laughs> couple more weeks I think and it'll be done which is a shame but also means I can put more time into more of my black work projects which mostly are by urban stitches which brings us into our next uh, black work project actually so the next uh, black work project is also by urban stitches of course but it's actually one of my pride projects now in my little community I'm running a three month long pride event from June till the end of August uh, where any craft or art, whatever, pride themed, uh, can be included. Uh, but it's taking place in my Discord server, which again, I will link uh, in the description down below. But this uh, pattern is Two Mates, which she actually, so it's a bookmark, and she actually de designed it because of a joke I made. Because gay ghosts, they were two mates, you know, the vibe. So I'm using Bradley's balloons for the first time. And I'm liking how it's looking. I like I just like stitched onto this piece of fabric so so that it would not only fit in a frame, but also so that when I, I work on it in stream, uh the white balance isn't all messed up because it has the white around it. But I I'm liking this project and I'm I, hopefully I'll uh get it finished in no time because it's a pretty small project, you know? I just need to actually work on it. As is always the uh, issue, I guess. <laughs> but that is the last black work project. But we have an embroidery update, which is the trick or treat, which previous picture here yeah, somewhere. Um, but this is a, a generic pack that I got off of Amazon, and I would just I got it out last night, and I was working on it. I finished off these like yellow leaf things and then I did the orange leaves uh, obviously I still need to finish off this one but then I need to do like the stems and stuff but I'm making good progress on that and I want to get it finished because I have some more embroidery stuff I want to do but I am limiting myself to one embroidery project at a time unless I do a, a huge one of course uh, because I want to be able to actually work on it <laughs> and get progress because I have so many other crafts I try to limit it. Sorry, I try to limit the number of whips that I have across the board so that I can not feel overwhelmed. Because I know some people have loads and loads of whips, and that's cool for those people. Uh, but I will get way too overwhelmed and give up, like completely just stop crafting until I frog some whips because I can only handle like so much, or else it gets too, too much. Right, I don't know. So next up we have knitting. Now 
the I have two two knitting whips I've uh, worked on. One one is one you've already seen from the whip parade. The other one is a new project that I am struggling with a lot. Um, I'll talk about that one when I get to it because we'll start with a good one, which is the 100 bag, which picture will have shown already. And the 100 bag is by Woolen Cottage. Now I have a redeem for this on my stream now, so you can use channel points, which are free. You just you earn them while being there. Uh, you can use channel points to get me to, to stop whatever it is I'm doing and knit around on the bag. So this is where we're at so far. We've uh, we've made a decent little bit of progress. I'm not sure how tall I'm going to go with this, but obviously I want to go taller than this. Uh, but the yarn I'm using is, uh, so I'm holding two yarns together. This like generic, I don't really, I think it's from Aldi actually. <laughs> or Littles, whichever one has a middle aisle with all the goodies in. Um, just like a general, generic, boucle cotton, creamy yarn. But then I'm holding it with all of these like minis that I have from Vegan, uh, from vegan Yarn and they were from uh, an advent calendar a few years ago. And so I finally found a use for them. And I'm I, I like this project. It's it's fun and it feels it feels really nice. And I'm definitely gonna use it as like a little project bag. That'll be fun. But now the other knitting project, which is a new project, which is the Burn It Down socks, which I'll put an image up on screen of both socks because the socks are a mismatched pair. The first one, which is the one I'm currently knitting, is it says burn turfs, not witches, and then the other sock says ban bigots, not books. And obviously, with it being pride, I figured perfect time to knit the burn turf socks. You know, my anti turf socks, as I've been calling them. But I got really frustrated and I ripped it all apart. Not because of the, something wrong with the pattern or the project itself, but because I'm not doing good mentally right now. And I'm being very destructive. And as a result, I ripped this whip apart. Which, in the grand scheme of things, isn't so bad because it has it had so little progress on it. So then I restarted it. But I want to I'm gonna take it apart again and restart it with a different uh, stitch count. Um, let me just real quick actually show you what I keep it in. So this is a little DPN case I made. And so as the sock is made, it like grows out, but it's held closed by those snaps so that the actual DPNs can't fall off. So it's a, it's a fun little thing. But yeah, I just have on my second version, I have, I just have the cuff and then a little bit of like two rounds. Not even that, just one one round of color work. I was I was further, I was further on my previous attempt, but I'm gonna rip that one apart and do it again because <laughs> I'm just not happy with it. Oh, actually, there is a third whip. Can I show it? Yes. So let me just. Yes, I. Eh? Let me just grab that. Uh, where did I put it? There it is. It is in. My own bowl. Actually, scratch that. Rewind for like ten seconds. Uh, <laughs> the yarns I'm using for the for the sock, I am using a mixture of West Yorkshire Spinners four ply, like signature four ply in butterscotch and milk bottle, which are both which are like both of these colors. But then I'm also using uh, Cascade Heritage in red, teal, and orange. So those are the, the yarns I'm using for the, the socks. Okay, now we can return to this mystery third project. <laughs> now, I mentioned Urban Stitches. Now, she has decided to commission me to make her a scarf. So I'm making her a scarf. And I need to restart it though, because uh, this yarn is kind of weird. Um, so I just need to restart on a slightly smaller needle Add a couple extra stitches to make up for that lo loss of size, um, but see, it'll show much better once it's done on a smaller one. But you can see with the pattern there. Now she doesn't. She if she watches the video, she'll know. But she doesn't know that she's not just getting a plain scarf. She's getting one with skulls on it, which I am figuring out 
Uh, I found a cable pattern for a scarf. Uh, not for a scarf. I found a cable pattern for skulls. And I decided that I would use that and like design my own scarf using that free chart. Because it's a free chart. I'm not using someone's paid for stuff uh, and then like claiming it as my own or anything. I'm also not claiming it as my own anyways. Because I, obviously I didn't design the actual cable pattern. But I, I'm designing the actual scarf itself. But the yarn I'm using is... King Cole's Forest Yarn. It's a recycled yarn. Uh, and it says it's an iron weight, but it is not. It is 100%, most definitely, a DK weight. Like, there is no way this yarn is an iron weight. It might fluff up a bit, little bit after it's washed, but, like, from what I'm looking at online, it doesn't really change that much. So that's why I've been having to, like, constantly restart and change the needle size and try to figure out what the best size is for this specific needle. But I, I like the yarn. The yarn feels really nice, and... This scarf will hopefully look good. Uh, hopefully by the next episode, I'll have an actual full skull that you can see. That'd be nice. <laughs> um, what else? Do we have anything else? Yes, we do. We we have we have a finish for crochet, a start and a finish for crochet actually. So, oh. oopsie. So I have. Uh, I have a book digitally. Uh, I'll put it up on the screen now. It is called The Fred Crochet Christmas Village. It is from 1989, as far as I can tell. Um, if I am wrong with that, I'll put a correction on the screen. But it's just lots of little, little Christmas houses and stuff. And of course, I had to make one. I'm, I want to work my way through the book and make all of them. Um, but I made the very first one. I'm making them in order. That way I know what I've done. But I made the very first one, and here it is. It's kind of hard to see because obviously it's, it's white crochet and it's hollow, but it's it's a little house, and I very much like my little house. <laughs> it's very cute. It's got a little door on it. Oh no, my little house! I dropped it. Yeah, so I'll pop that. Uh, I'll pop it there. E little house, <laughs> and then I also have a little a little sewing update. Um. I just decided to randomly start sewing together some of my little English paper piece hexes. There's no like rhyme or reason, I'm just randomly connecting them. Because I figured I may as well smush them all together, just make a big piece of fabric out of them, or as big as I can, and then use that to make something else. I'm thinking possibly a project bag. <laughs> Maybe something similar to this one, without the petals. Like, use the same basic, like, dimensions. Maybe make it, like, a little bit taller. Depending on how much. And then use it as, like, a decorative thing, I guess. But that's that. Uh, but we also have hall. Which, let me just clean this up. And then we will get back with the hall. If you're not interested in hall, that's fine. Uh, I will see you next time. If I have to hang them out. But, yeah. Let me clean up and then show... We'll show off some stuff. Okay, so the haul. Now, before I show my haul, I, I am running a year long stash busting challenge in my Discord server. You make your own rules. It is not a ban. It is very important to remember that. It is not a full on ban on buying stuff. Like that's those don't work for the most time most part. And when you slip up you're more likely to just give up and spiral with spending. Uh, which is why I'm avoiding by making people have their own rules and not have it as a full-out ban unless that they know that works for them but i did break my own rules but like i said previously i'm struggling i'm doing like really really badly mentally and i impulsively spent money but also like it's for stuff i really want to do it's egg again so i don't feel as bad about breaking my my stash busting rules but i did break them and i do feel bad about that but I'll just try harder, I guess. <laughs> but to start off with, I decided to get myself another like knockoff Q snap. Just because I like these and I thought why not? It's in plastic, so I'm trying not to rustle it much. Uh, I got something I need, which is just a piece of black felt. Cause I need this in order to be able to finish the uh, the, the gay bookmark, because I want to put black on the back because it's black 
uh, fabric. So make, makes sense. But then we have. So I, I bought the wrong crochet thread, but honestly, I quite like it. I meant to buy a black one, but this is a dark blue anchor, like size 12, uh, like crochet thread. But I'm not mad about it. I, I do like it, and I will still use it for its intended purpose, which is a doily, which you will see in a moment. But then we also got three three balls of 100 grams, so 300 grams of size 40 uh, fr crochet thread from, like, it's one of the DMC ones. But <laughs> my brain wants to say baby low, but I don't think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, but I got three of these because I need 205 grams of size 40 for another doily. Not even a doily, really, for a decorative piece that you will also see in a moment because it's within the hole. But it's within the hole I didn't pay for, but there is still one item left of the hole that I did spend money on. And that is, if I can open it up, it's a lot bigger than I thought it would be, which is extra cool because it wasn't that expensive. It was actually quite cheap. Uh, which weighs up. So it's an embroidery panel. Let me try and show at least some of it. But it's like, it has four different designs on it. It's from French General. I love their fabrics, but I could never actually ever afford any of their actual fabrics because it's so expensive. Um, but I saw this and it's designs from their from some of their fabrics um, that they've turned into like embroidery panels and I thought that could be fun because I can colour it in and use it for something. Yay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I will show you the, that's the end of the doil, of the doily hole. That's the end of the part of the hole for stuff I actually spend money on. But we do also have um, a bunch, like a whole a stack of uh, doily patterns that I got for free from my craft group. I'm not going to go through all of them, obviously, um, but I do want to show a few things from it, including the two doilies, well, the doily and the decorative piece that I plan on making with, with the haul that I just got. So give me a second and we will look at those. Okay, so I, I mostly am going to show you the doily, the doily and the decorative piece uh, that I want to do, and then I'll show you like a few others, because these are quite old patterns as well, which is fun. I'm not sure when they're all from though, but there's this one, which is what I needed the black for, because I needed the black for the for the for the part of the face. And there's like a miniature version where you just have four of them instead. Which I also want to do. Um but these are like actually like 3D uh swans. It's like a close-up of an actual of the actual swans. Yeah, this one's from 1980. So I wanna I wanna make that. <laughs> but then the other one, which so that's why I needed the black thread for, but obviously I've got the dark blue, but that's fine. It's fine, I'm fine with that. I actually like that colour. Um but the other one, which I keep referring to as the decorative piece, you'll understand why in a second, is this. I have no idea when this is from. Um but the pattern is called Pleasure, and I have nicknamed it Lesbians. And yeah, there's there's so many doilies here. Like I've got this, like a whole set. <laughs> is this one telling you when it's from? No. I have to be careful with some of these because like, they're like quite old, so they they've come to me already broken, like already torn. Is this one? Some of them are like booklets with multiple in, and some of them are just like pamphlets. There's this one has got like a bunch of stuff. And there's one that I want to show you, which oh yeah, the prices of these like to show just how old these are. So in the UK, we currently use the 
uh, pounds and pennies. That's our currency is is pounds and pennies. But there was a time where we didn't use pounds and pennies, and that's when a lot of these patterns are actually from. So this one was four D, <laughs> and from what from what I can tell, that's from like when we were in between switching from like half penny and like sixpence and stuff to our modern uh, currency. But I'm not entirely sure about that, but that's what my research was telling me, but I could be wrong. Because there's no date on these, which is a shame, because I really want to know when when these are from. There's a whole bunch of them that cost 4D. But then there's, there's ones like this where it's literally been held together by tape. And at first I thought this was like brown packing tape, but it's not. It was clear, it was clear sticky tape clear cellar tape but it's so old that it's become like packing tape but i have to be very careful with this one in particular because i mean very carefully open it it is literally being held together by that one bit of tape going around so i'm going to like scan scan these in and use them that way i don't want to be constantly having to open and close them and stuff but uh let me just it was like the main one I wanted to show you. But I want to show you just how many I got. That's a whole whole load of, of booklets and pamphlets. And of course there's two that I definitely want to do, which are the ones I've just showed you. The dolphin and the lesbians. Um, is there anything else in the video? Mm, well, other than obviously you should check out my friends, uh, Crow and Dace. But also, like, I, I really enjoy watching um, Jen the Caffeinated Crafter. I'm definitely going to be linking her because she's great. <laughs> she has hundreds of whips. Like, hundreds. With an S at the end. <laughs> so many whips. And it gives me anxiety, but it's so cool to like just see the system she's got to make sure she's working on everything. Um, it's pretty neat. She's just moved a uh, house, so she's getting herself a little crafting area set up, which is very fun. But she's great. But yeah, so I will see everyone next time. I don't know when I'll next film, because um, obviously it's been like just over two weeks since my last video, but it all depends on how um, if I've got stuff to show, basically. Uh, but ideally, I'll see you in another two weeks, possibly. That with my, my cockatiel saying hello, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I will see everyone next time, and goodbye.